TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem. I'm Aaron Viner sitting in for Jonathan Hassan. And in today's top stories, three IDF soldiers were killed by an Egyptian border policeman who Cairo says went rogue, but in what Jerusalem security officials believe was a premeditated Islamist-driven act of terror. IAEA Director General Rafael Grossi acknowledges that Iran's answer to an open investigation into undeclared nuclear activity is in fact unverifiable. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu asserted during a security cabinet exercise simulating a multi-sector conflict that the nation's defense establishment is well prepared for any challenge. Israel's defense establishment unyieldingly persists with its war on terror as part of Operation Wavesbreaker in the West Bank districts of Judea, Samaria, and the Jordan Valley. Ten suspected terror operatives were successfully apprehended during extensive overnight activities by the IDF, the Israel Security Agency, and the Border Police Special Operation Forces throughout the territories. While most of the missions were executed without any opposition, unidentified suspects hurled an improvised explosive device at the Israeli troops in the Palestinian village of Antaba, although no injuries were reported. A deadly incident did occur over the weekend on Israel's border with Egypt, however, according to preliminary investigation, after crossing into Israel illegally, an Egyptian border police officer shot and killed two IDF soldiers who were manning an observation post along the security fence that separates the two countries. Additional forces rushed to the scene after the slain troops failed to respond to radio communications. A manhunt was subsequently launched immediately after discovery of the victims' bodies. The incident starts with an army officer getting to the point where he recognizes two soldiers, and the soldier and the female soldier are dead. From that moment, from that moment on, we treated it as a terrorist attack. It was during canvassing of the area in extensive efforts to track down the assailant that he then opened fire on the Israeli forces, killing a third soldier before other troops nearby returned live fire and effectively ended the incident by eliminating the Egyptian service member. IDF Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Herzi Alevi has charged head of the Southern Command, Major General Eliezer Toledano, with leading the official inquiry into the deadly attack in cooperation with the Egyptian military. During his weekly cabinet meeting in Jerusalem yesterday, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu stressed Israel's expectation that the joint investigation with Egypt will be comprehensive and in-depth. The incident on the Egyptian border is severe and extraordinary and will be fully investigated. Israel has conveyed a clear message to the Egyptian government. We expect that the joint investigation will be exhaustive and thorough. This is part of the important security cooperation between us, which has benefited both countries over the years. We will draw all the necessary conclusions regarding our actions along the fence on the southern border, the Israeli-Egyptian border. While this fence, which was built in 2013, blocked the flood of illegal migrants into Israel, there is still smuggling, and terrorists make periodic attempts to cross the fence and attack our forces. We will reinvigorate the procedures, the modus operandi and also the means, in order to minimize smuggling and in order to ensure that tragic attacks such as these do not recur. It is important to note that authorities in Cairo have conveyed a message to Jerusalem describing the policeman who committed the shooting attack as a rogue officer, while emphasizing that the Arab Republic does not want the incident to damage bilateral relations with the Jewish state. Israel is still in possession of the body of the dead terrorist, which will ultimately be repatriated. Israel's three fallen soldiers have been identified as 19-year-old servicewoman Corporal Leah Ben Nun, 19-year-old Staff Sergeant Ori Yitzhak Iluz, and 20-year-old Staff Sergeant Ohad Dahan. 
All of the young officers were promoted posthumously and laid to rest yesterday evening. In other news, just ahead of the International Atomic Energy Agency's quarterly Board of Governors meeting that opened in Vienna today, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu accused the nuclear watchdog organization of failing to sufficiently confront the Islamic Republic. Iran is continuing to lie to the International Atomic Energy Agency. The IAEA's capitulation to Iranian pressure is a black stain on its record. We revealed information to the world when we brought to Israel Iran's secret nuclear archive five years ago. This information unequivocally proved that Iran was violating the oversight agreements and that it was enriching uranium for military, not innocent civilian purposes. Iran's excuses since then regarding the finding of nuclear material in prohibited locations are not only unreliable liable, they are technically impossible. The IAEA's ineffectual conduct in the face of these weak excuses conveys a message to Iran's rulers that they need not pay any price whatsoever for their violations and that they can continue deceiving the international community with their efforts to obtain nuclear weapons. Netanyahu went on to stress that important work by the IAEA is at risk of becoming redundant should it lose its neutrality by succumbing to pressure from various political entities. If the IAEA becomes a political organization, then its oversight activity in Iran is without significance, as will be its reports on Iran's nuclear activity. In any case, Israel under our leadership will not stand by. We will strongly uphold our position, both publicly and behind closed doors. The Israeli premier concluded his remarks on Iran by highlighting Jerusalem's deepening cooperation with Washington in combined strategies to confront Tehran's nuclear ambitions before turning to other matters of mutual concern. Our alliance with the U.S. is as steadfast as ever. The security and intelligence cooperation between Israel and the U.S. is at an all-time peak. Last Friday, Minister Ron Dermer and National Security Council Director Tsahi Hanegbi returned from an important visit to the U.S. which I had assigned them. They discussed, at length, the Iranian issue and other matters that are important to our national security. This visit was in continuation of my talks with President Biden, Secretary of State Blinken, National Security Advisor Sullivan, CIA Director Burns, and of the joint exercises by the IDF and the U.S. military, of course. IAEA Director General Rafael Grossi responded to Netanyahu's remarks earlier this afternoon by dismissing any criticism and maintaining that the organization remains impartial in all of its activities. Uh, what we have informed is that we have received uh, a, a reply, a response uh, from Iran, which is plausible, and this is why uh, we uh, have said that we have no further questions on this particular uh, segment of an issue which is much wider. As you know, we, we continue to maintain an assessment uh, regarding uh, this uh, site where some very specific type of testing uh, uh, was uh, conducted and we have not changed that, uh, uh, that uh, assessment. What we have is received a, a reply that is plausible, so we cannot exclude that what they are telling us uh, may have happened, although we do not have any means to actually um, prove or disprove that that was the case, that that was the case, we cannot, uh, we cannot exclude it. Regarding the dispute over last week's IAEA report saying that it no longer has questions at this stage following what it called not inconsistent responses to previous queries into undeclared nuclear activity, Director Grossi did eventually go on to acknowledge that the IAEA could not in fact verify whether or not the Iranian answer was indeed credible. We are used to this, you know. Uh, one day is one side that says one thing, and the other, the other day is another side. We accept this as part of our work. Our work is neutral, is impartial, is technical, and we will always say things as they are. The considerations of what this implies is not up to us, and I will never comment on, on government's opinions on what, on what we do. 
While the IAEA Board of Governors will continue to hold discussions on the Iranian file over the coming days, Israel is actively preparing for a multi-sector conflict with the Islamic Republic and its regional proxies as part of the two-week IDF exercise, codenamed Firm Hand. It was in that context that Jerusalem's security cabinet assumed an active role during the training when the top political brass participated in a number of separate scenarios simulating all-out war. The reality in our region is changing rapidly. We are not stagnating. We are adapting our combat doctrine and our possibilities for action in keeping with these changes and our goals, which are not changing. We are committed to acting against the Iranian nuclear program, against missile attacks on the state of Israel, and against the possibility of the fronts becoming linked, what we call a multi-front campaign. This obliges us to evaluate, if it is possible to do so in advance, many of the main decisions that the security cabinet and the government would need to make together with the security establishment, the IDF, and other security elements. This is the goal of the exercise. We are certain that we can deal with every threat by ourselves and also by other means. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. Everyone here at TV7 joins me in encouraging you to pray for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Erin Viner, wishing you a Shavua Mevorach, a blessed week. And God willing, we'll see you again here tomorrow at the same time.